All right, anyway. Everybody, uh, good to see you. Uh, I'm Jacob Patassi. I'm the director of engineering at Stopper. Um, and I'm Sam. I'm a consultant at Stopper also. And uh, today we're going to talk about the uh, PHP at Themer Should Know. And, uh, and Sam's going to run through some pre-process uh, functions and show you how, you know, how you could use uh, a couple things for PHP. Um, so, you know, what I want to talk about is I've, I've done all the interviewing for Stopper for the, you know, since I've been there, I've been there five years, I've, I was the second employee there, so, uh, and I do all the interviewing for them, and um, I get interviews from people uh, who, you know, were looking for a themer, and, um, and I start interviewing for them, and I throw some, you know, basic PHP at them, like if statement or for statement. Or you know, for each, just something you know, really, really, uh, really, just you know, beginner PHP level, and um, you know, throw them for a loop. They're like, wait, I can't, I, I don't know, like how to do that. You know, it's like, you know, what about CSS? And I'm like, okay, great. You know, you're, you know, there's stylers, and themers, and the, uh, you know, the essential difference is, is you know, like if you're a styler, you could do you know the HTML, and you could really rock out, and then you know they're, you know, really important. Uh, really important uh, attributes to have in, in, in the styling. I mean, it's hard. It's not like that easy to really make a good style work across all the browsers. Um, and then there's themers that uh, you know can dive into like your template.php, you know, handle pre process do a couple of statements. Um, this is important because, like, as a tech lead, um, when I'm divvying up the tasks, I got to know how far I need to go with you. If you're, you know. If you're like, man, I could do the style, but uh, I'm not really, I don't really know my much PHP, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit there and make my menu, call back, get you a big, give you an array of stuff, and I'm going to hand it to you and say, okay, this is your tpl.php file, here's your array, you know, go make it look like it's supposed to look, and a themer should be able to take that array, loop through it, print it out in its HTML, and, uh, and get it to do what it needs to do. Um, if you're, you know, strictly styler, I know that I got to get into that template.php, do the loop through, print in like, you know, an order list or something, and then go, okay, now go make it look the way it needs to look. Um, so I'm going to pass over to Sam here, and he's going to go through uh, some examples for you right now. All right, so I'm going to look at um, the preprocess function. It's basically that little challenge that Jacob is talking about, going from that stylers versus themers. Preprocess does a lot of that for you. It's going to be a um, fairly short talk, and I'm just going to show you guys a couple of um, very basic demos. But the big dilemma that when I started, I guess, theming, and I wasn't sure that what is that dollar sign content, if you look at your templates, how many people have looked through any templates, like page.tpl, note.tpl? Okay, so a good amount. So you, you see all these dollar sign content, dollar sign page, dollar sign title, and you wonder... Um, where did they come from? How can I actually get inside that content and make it more useful? How can I use it to contextually C use CSS because of that content? How can I transform it to something that I like? So the big answer is preprocess function. Um, preprocess allows you to make your content, that dollar side content that we talked about, more flexible, contextual, dynamic. It allows you to dive into those variables, change them around if you want, put some sort of hook inside of them, change the styling. So it goes through a lot of basically details that just that dollar sign content by itself doesn't really show you anything. So when does this preprocess actually happen? Typically, if you're going to have a request that comes from your browser. You have your modules that interact with the database. They're like, hey, database, give me the data. They grab the data, they process it, and then they send it back to that theme layer. But if you notice between that return data to that formatted data that gets to the theme layer and becomes HTML, it's like a one-way street if you don't know any preprocess. Because it's just you've got the data and it's becoming HTML, and that's where you wonder, okay, how can I make more use of it? And going back to to this slide, you see that what happens on that one way is through the templates in Drupal. This is a sample of a you know a web page, which you know it's a, consists of your HTML template, your page node, and your blocks. Could be different. You might have ten blocks or no blocks. You might have ten nodes, but these are some of the templates that you have. So, how many people know if you want to make an um, template specific for your article, it's going to be like article dash dash, you know, 
your node, tpl.php. Has anybody done that? Okay, so that's good. So you actually have been into the template and you know how to play around with it. So the pre-process helps this dialogue, basically, that we talked about between that return data and the formatted data. So that's where the pre-process comes in and it's like, all right, then I can dive into these variables. So the variables that you have in your template right here, so the variables inside the note.tpl, you can interact with them through the page pre-process. The ones that you have in, or vice versa, on the node, you can use it through preprocess node, or the page.tpl, you can interact with them through preprocess page. So when you have those preprocess functions available to you, then you can dive into them and change it. So I'm going to do some um, demos. Basically, template.php is where all this preprocess page business happens. We're going to um, use the preprocess page and node function, which they interact with page and node.tpl. And go ahead. Um, are the preprocess functions are they always exposed? Single piece of template um, if you have those templates and you have those preprocess page functions, then yeah, they are interacting. So if you pass your variables inside the preprocess page, then inside the page.tpl, all those variables are actually available to you. Oh, so you have to specifically pass them to a snap. Hopefully, they will. You have a bunch of actually, you'll see it in my demo that you have a bunch of variables that come in out of the box on page.tpl.php from let's say you have a base theme, but. In order to add more variables, actually play with those variables, you need to go through the preprocess page because you want to preprocess it before it goes to that theme layer. I guess what I'm asking is the ones that like that you have available for page are they also available for node and block? They're very they're ones that are very similar. They're different. We actually go through them. And I'll show you some okay. of the variables. Okay, so it's, it's not global across every single type of template. Um, the page is the note can be different. It, out of the box, the note comes with a bunch of them, but then you can actually add variables to it. Does that answer your question? So, like, so for instance, like the content function that you're using there, can mm -hmm. you reference the that? Content the content function? Or the, uh, the preprocess for the content? Okay. Um, as you run, as you, uh, as you step through all your different, as you saw that block and whatever, there's a dollar sign bars variable, and that dollar sign bars variable will be passed along, uh, along the stack as you go down. So, once you start at the top, uh, at the topmost level of your preprocess, so if you're in preprocess node and you send something into that dollar sign bars variable or variable, uh, it will show up in your page okay. variable. So the template just Yeah, and as you get down, as you get down the uh, dollar sign bars, uh, he'll show you how each one kind of. Stacks yeah, basically the demo is kind of answering your question, so I think it'll make sense. And I'm also going to use the DPM function. Um, how many people have used DPM before? Okay, so a like good amount. DPM is basically. Uh, available through the um, develop module I'll get to and explain to you guys. So let's get right into it. I'm going to be using these three tools. Chrome Inspector, has I already used that before? That's good. It, if you haven't used it, it's, it's an amazing tool. Firebug has one, um, Safari has the same. Develop module is the module that um, provides that DPM function for you and then Drudge. How many people have used Drudge before? It's, I mean, I'm going to just use it to clear cache, but it's, it's a very handy tool. So let's get right into it. And you'll see in his demo, uh, these pre-process functions, uh, he'll be making use of some PHPs in there, some pretty very basic PHP, and uh, it'll that kind of ties back to what I was saying in the beginning, you know, the basic things that, that you should know how to do. So, um, can everybody see that? So, just to go through the page.tpl, you can see all these different dollar signs that you have here, dollar sign site name, dollar sign, you know title, dollar sign, content, and um, if you go to the documentation, it has a pretty good description for most of them, but still when you actually want to change something, it's still a little vague. And um, just for your information, all these variables are created in this file, it's called theme.inc. Um, we're not going to have time in this presentation, but I would recommend actually going through and see how it's created. Um, so let's look at the template and use one of these pre-process functions. So, the name of your function usually starts with the name of your theme. It's mine, it's presentation, underscore preprocess, underscore page. Um, template.php is usually created under a sites all themes, your theme name, and then template.php, or you can put it in a template folder. So you have the name of your theme, you have preprocess, underscore page, and then you have those that variable. That's basically an array of the variable that you're going to pass to the page.tpl because you're using preprocess page, and it's passed by reference. Yes. That by reference means that you don't have to return anything at the end of the function. When you see in PHP, like you'll see a function at the end of returns. Um, the reason it's returning is whatever's calling that function is saving it on the other side. When they pass it in by reference, 
you're essentially built everything you change of that variable will persist. Okay, so. So in the first step, let's actually DPM this uh, variables. So what DPM does is, um, if you've never been exposed to it, it grabs your variables, puts it in a nice little format, and then outputs it on the message box on your browser page. Um, it has a couple, um, I guess, tricks into it. Some variables look a little um, tricky, but one thing to keep in mind is that make sure you don't overload your DPMs, because um, if you do, it's going to basically exceed your SQL session, and you might get some SQL errors. So let's see how it looks like. Um, one key point to remember, every time you add a new template file, every time you add a new function to your template, you clear your cache. I use Drush to do that, so say, uh, here, Drush, clear cache. Okay. I've made a little um, demo site right here. It's, um, I have a theme called presentation. I have just a couple content types, a basic page, and an article. So. Let's refresh the page, and here's that DPM message that we were talking about. So if you go down the line, you can see you got your theme hook suggestions, you got content, you got you know front page, you got your node. One thing about the node that you see it's an object here, and there's a recursive reference to it. And in order to actually see that, instead of DPMing that bars, you want to do DPM bars, the little brackets, and then the note, and that'll actually give you the note, or you can DPM that note inside the preprocess note, which we'll do in the next um, example, and you see it. Um, just to show you, we actually got the whole page right here, and you can look at everything. You have the content here, you know, if you go to system main, you have all the notes. For example, I have one note here. It shows you what I got, the body. You can, so you can go just down to every single field that you have and look at it. So let's try to um, define a new variable, pass it to this vars array that we have, and try to print it maybe, add it to where it says Drupal camp. So in order to do that, because that Drupal camp is in that section and that's in the page.tpl, first of all, we need to use preprocess page, define that variable there, and then also we need to print that in our page.tpl. So let's actually look at it. So I just simply define a new variable here. I add Los Angeles 2012, and I'm going to keep this DPM here so when we go to the actual page, you can see where it's been added. So I come back here to my page.tpl, we said we're going to add it to the site name. So I'm going to scroll down to where my site name is here. So that's the site name right there. And I'm just going to check to see if that variable is set. I'm just going to print it. Same here. Back, refresh. So you see we've added that variable on top to the to the header. And if you go back to the array, you see there's a new um, element added to it on the bottom called welcome and well it's not just 2012. It's nothing fancy, but it shows you that how you can actually define a variable in your preprocess function and pass it back to your template. Um, let's do um, something a little more, I guess, interesting. Let's say the client comes in and tells you that um, I want an article content type, I want to be tagging these articles as science or politics. And based on what you've tagged them, I want you to change the background of the note here. So first thing you need to do, you need to have an article content up, obviously, and you need to have taxonomy terms so you can tag them. But then, since we're working on the note and you want to change the background of the note, that means you need to work in the note.tpl.php and thus use the preprocess note. So let's go to my note.tpl.php. Does anybody have any questions so far? Pretty clear. That's good. So, usually get rid of your DPMs because you don't want to overload them and you don't want the client to see all your DPMs in there, right? Um, so, actually, let's see. Let's do this. So, the preprocess node is the same way. Let's DPM the variables in here so we can look at them and see how can we change these variables. Sure. Correct. So the te you, all your preprocess functions go inside the template. But for example, here I have my preprocess page and node. But if you want to have a specific template for, let's say, blog posts, you have preprocess underscore um, blog posts, and then you have an actual blog post. You could do it in the node too. But if you want to make it more specific for blog, you'll have a template for your blog. You know, blog post dot tpl dot php. So, so essentially. Yeah, your preprocess typically is in there. 
Yeah. So let's PM this, this one and see what we got. I have two articles here. One is, you know, tag politics and sports. The other one is, I think, science. So let's, um, we added a new function. I always forget it too. We add a new function to our template. We need to clear cache. Um, one thing you guys should keep in mind is the DPM is usually um, one request behind. So if you refresh your page and you're like, where's my DPM? Just refresh it again. It should show up. There we go. So there we go. You have every single um, element inside the array. You have your UID. You have your title. You have the comments. You have your node ID. The type is article. So every single field that you can imagine will be here. So we are looking for the field tags that I had. So if you go down to it. I had, since I had two taxonomy terms tag on it, we have a zero and a one. I have my tax um, term ID and I have my taxonomy term. And if I go down to it, you can actually see I got a name with the name of the field that I had, politics. And I had two of them. So this one should be sports. So what we need to do is we need to somehow go loop. We need to use PHP to go loop through this array and grab, and if, it, if the term exists, that name, we need to grab it and do something with it so we can actually change the background there. So let's go back to our preprocess function right here. So I'm just using a for loop right here, checking to see um, for that field tags, if you remember, just to show you guys how the hierarchy went. I'm going to use that as my um, index, and I see if that is actually set. I'm going to use that variable that I grab right here, I'm going to append it to this tag prefix, and I'm going to put it in this classes array. So you would ask, what is this classes array? Actually, the classes array is kind of interesting because um, we, if you look at on the note.ppl.php, our classes array is right here. What classes array is, is basically an array of, you know, strings of classes, and what it does is that you can basically use these classes to style your page um, contextually through CSS. So every time I add a new class, on my pre-process page or to that classes array, it basically concatenates all of them and just puts a space. So you can add as many classes that you want based on the function of the site, and then you just you know target that class. So let's go back to my template. So I'm basically adding that to the classes array, and I'm going to put politics and science in there. So let's say we want to do two different colors for politics and science. Um, now before I actually show you guys, okay, these are commented out. Let's go back to the page so I can show you how that's done. So any questions about this so far? Pretty straightforward, right? Could you just not have it uh, like pull everything out of that array and just give all the classes? Right, but then the, the point of this is that I actually need to know what is that article um, tagged with and add that to the classes array. Because you were saying if I pull it in, I'm doing a specific, for example, I'm doing a specific color on science, and I'm doing a specific color for politics. So I actually have to go to that specific array and grab that element. I understand what you're asking is why you just for each it and just every time the variable name at tag politics, tag sports, tag. We're just showing some extra PHP code here, and so like you can see like the if statement being used and the for statement being used. So. So going back to this page, let me get rid of my, um, if I didn't already go back to this page. Since I already added that tag, if I go back here and inspect element, I should have had that classes added to my um, note right here. And you guys can see this tag politics has been added. And if I go to my other article one, whatever tag it was, it should have been added to it. You guys see the... <laughs> there you go, you see the tax science is right here. So let's go back to our CSS and simply we can just target those classes. So I just have a class for science and politics. Save that. Go back to my page. See the content is blue for science and the content is green. It's, again, it's nothing fancy, but I think the the 
most important thing is here that we're actually using what is past in the node and we're contextually styling it. So, just a um, few reminders for you guys based on the short presentation we had. Uh, yeah, uh, this is just uh, meant to be you know, a short presentation on, you know, how preprocess works and, you know, how uh, some extra things that, uh, you know, if you're coming out saying, you know, I'm a themer, I can do it all, that uh, you, know, you don't have to be a PHP expert. But knowing an if statement, knowing how to add something in an array, knowing how to for each through an array is uh, pretty important. And you can see that you know there's not really much to do it, just a little bit of logic, and uh, you go a long way. How you know, but styling is incredibly important. Being really good at cascading style sheets is is a really good talent. And, uh, and so you know, if you're you know if you're a styler, just you know make sure. You, let, you know, if you're on a project, you let your tech lead know exactly where where you're at and what you're comfortable with, so that the tasks that you're assigned are uh, are appropriate for your level. This question. I can extend. <laughs> one question. I need to try to move some functionality from one block to another block. Okay. And I, I need it to still interact with the first block, but I need it to be interaction. Are these different blocks actually? Yeah, right after this we can help you out with more details, yeah. Um, anyway, so it's it's pretty um, straightforward stuff, but the reason I um, decided to actually do this talk with um, Jacob was that when I actually started, I was didn't really I knew just a tiny bit of PHP, and I didn't really know how this relationship worked. And you know, I was kind of like banging my head against the wall that I was like, all right, how, what is this happening, or how is this happening? So I think this little short talk would have been um, beneficial to me. So hopefully, it was the same thing to you. Basically, template.php and the DPMs are your friends. Just use them. Go, you know, dive into the variables, see what you got, how you can change them. I'm sure you'll find something. Um, don't overload DPM because you're going to get some nasty errors. And clear cache, the first answer to a lot of your um, questions is clear cache. Um, if you did like uh, any of these talks or this talk, um, the first video is actually kind of a step back from what we talked about. So if the templates are still new for you guys and um, you don't really know how they interact with the preprocess function. They talk about the templates in more detail, and they say how, where they create it, where they go. Um, if you like this talk and you want to see more examples, the second video is uh, it's a more in-depth talk of what I did. It covers some of the same um, material, but actually gives more advanced demos. And any more questions? Yeah, these uh, these will be up on stalker.com. We'll uh, be posting this to our blog uh, Monday or Tuesday. So. You can go check back over there for them. Um, I, I just want to know real quick. If you're pulling back like a lot, a huge list of notes or anything like that, have you ever seen a problem like with the performance of moving through every single one? You mean in the DPM function? No, not DPM, but if, like for example, if you need to massage data that's coming back, right. and you're having to loop through a huge data set. Have you any issues with I've never seen it. I don't know if Jacob's seen anything um, like that. If all you're doing is like a for each, like you've got your note, your node variables are there. All the information's been taken from the database, so you're not getting any performance there. Um, at that point, if you're just looking through the data, it should be, you know, it should be good. Just, uh, looking through it, there would be, you know, there may be performance hits depending on how much data you're looking through. Um, but uh, as you're looking through it, uh, putting in something in there to uh, short circuit the uh, loop once you're there, kind of like it's like an exit or like a continue or something. You're looping through and you're like, oh, I found it, and it's just going to keep going. Right. But, uh, you know, uh, there are things in PHP, so as you're going, it's like, hey, I found it. All right, I'm out. Because then the problems were if you pull like a huge data set back. Instead of looping through it as it's being pulled back, something to pull the entire set. You and know, then they decide to loop through it. And then, it's 
spits them all out. So it, it, you know, it is. It is. It, it can be. I'm it, sure it would be better off having them. It. it definitely can be, depending on how big of a set you're looking through. Uh, you know, even putting that in like you know that short circuit's not going to help you if it's the last thing is right. that defined. Um, so you know, it's always best to you know when you, to do it when you're pulling it out so you don't have a huge set. One point about, um, oh, sorry. I was just going to, I just remember one point that you were talking about data. One point about DPM is that if um, you guys are working on a production site and you can't DPM, you don't want to have that long message. There's another function called DD. It's also through the develop module. And instead of putting that big message on your um, screen, puts all your variables inside a um, text file and puts it in your temp directory. You know, if you'd never want to have that and you don't have actually the option of um, putting that on your local, that's another option. D, D, and just parentheses. Um, you have, um, if you keep calling it and you forget to get it out of it, you're going to get some, I, mean, I can probably show you if I can get it in there. I'll get it. No, if you just keep it in there and refresh a few times, I'm sure you'll get it. I mean, let me just keep both of them in there. Yeah. There you go. In the bottom, you see you got this session handle because you're exceeding your um, SQL session, and that's what happens. Um, I've had it twice, but yeah, I usually should try to call them once and then comment it out, kind of a thing. I mean, this is. I mean, if you're just handling code and it's, it's not on production site, it's not a big deal. But you just sometimes you actually forget about it, and you're doing a demo or something, and it's there. And it doesn't really look nice on the demo if you're. Demoing to someone non technical. Did you throw up that link again to the videos? So I didn't get to hear something. Sure. They're going to be up on um, UCI in our website, but there you go. Have you ever run into a um, situation where maybe DSM or DPM versus DSM and neither of those work where you had to go through uh, maybe use KPR? I haven't personally. I um, before I knew about DPM, I used to use like print R, like the var dump. But I, I since I like got introduced to DPM, I've been using DPM. I don't. I haven't had a problem. Yeah, I, I don't. Even, I don't use DPM. I don't yeah. use print. I don't really use the cell module. I just die print everything because I hate like seeing how it prints out. I just love seeing like. This is what's yeah, I'm, I always do my source, and I, it's just. Um, I'm faster that way. Like, I just, like, just go, I'm like, stop. Also, if you have your develop module enabled, you actually don't have to miss, unless you want to DPM something specific, it always um, does it for you automatically. So um, if you look at your, I have this develop tag right here, and depending on where you are, it's going to give you those right here anyways. Do you have develop in production? Yeah, definitely not. Um, how much knowledge should a uh, theme or styler know about uh, arrays, I mean, functions versus objects, and how to uh, use the two together uh, in, in that aspect? It's, um, objects and arrays are two different things, and you, in Drupal, you see these things just intermingled when you're printing out in like a deep Right, way. so... Um, this node right here is an object, you know? So, uh, you should know how to, like, it, as you, if you go back to your uh, code. Uh, right here, you see he's putting things into an array using the brackets. Uh, right. And brackets are basically, you know, arrays. Uh, but you also see him checking the name of that taxonomy term you have right there. It's an object. So he's checking the name using the arrow instead of the array. Right than the brackets. Yeah, knowing those two are uh, pretty important. I don't know if it'll throw it. Like, can you throw his name? Give name. Make it, try to call it as yeah, a name. How do you um, know that it would actually be name? In, if you actually go through DPM, it'll show you yeah, if it's an object. So. Okay. It's gonna give it. Should better. throw me a nice. Yeah, yeah it'll. Let me get rid of all the DPM so it doesn't. Okay. There you go. Scroll down. Is that an object within these, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that's for the, yeah. Yeah, 
Do I have another DP? Yeah, you have another DP. Oh, there you go. I'm going to see a uh, new if you can log into it. Sure. Um, you're not going to see your gas uh, code right here, but in your PHP and SQL error, you'll see this. Or if, you, uh, or if you have some uh, things, some PHP, and a lot of people fall into this. I've had this question asked me many times, like, crap, it keeps telling me that. And uh, whenever you see STD class, that's an object. And so uh, whenever you start seeing like STD class as array or array as STD class or something, uh, you may want to go check how, you know, what your data set is. And DPM shows you it's an object. Or the class, so as you're just going down, you're like array, array, object, arrow, mm -hmm. array, brackets, object, arrow, array, brackets, all right, great. So, yeah, it's just a matter of walking through and figuring it out. I, I break it all the time. Doing that. Like, ah. I don't know if um, print R like, tells you actually when, with, if it's an object or. Uh, it, so, does. it does? Yeah. Oh, okay. It does array as to the class. Oh, it does, okay. Yeah, so that's a pretty good question because I was making the same mistake at the beginning as when I learned about it too, and I was like, all right, I'm putting the brackets scenario. What's going on? And then I was like, oh, okay. Can we, can we go back to the, uh, the code? Yeah. Sure. Oh, the DPM. Yeah. Yeah. I got it. Sure. Yeah. 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 I know you should have to Yeah. Oh, no, this one was. No, no, you should have to check it. It's right. Oh, yeah. So you'll basically be like, oh, It'll be like, great, big white screen, but your DP still shows up, it's right. important. And you'll see, as you're running down, it's calling itself. So, for example, this one is an STD class. Array, right? and then you go down, array, and then you go down. Class, arrow, and then you come over here. So, Got you're it. like, brackets, brackets, arrow, brackets. Then you got your value. So. Okay. Any other questions? Um, good resources that maybe uh, it's, it's good uh, that you said you know when you first started as a beamer mm -hmm. you didn't know that but right. PHP uh, besides those two specifically for PHP to help you get a, a more basic grasp and understanding of it what are some good resources that you found or are those pretty much the two top I honestly looked at I had a PHP book that these guys threw at me and I was reading that and you know I I had a Java background and I knew, so that just it's mostly with syntax, which is pretty much easier. I mean, you don't have, like, PHP makes it so much easier for you. You don't have that many, all the types. You don't have, like, all the restrictions. You just kind of want to get the work done. So in that as aspect, it was actually kind of nice to just you learn the syntax and the rest of it's just there compared to, like, other languages that you're just, like, limited and you're not actually, you know, it's always giving you errors that PHP is not going to give you errors. Like, yeah, it's going to give you an error if it's an object compared to an array, but... Like, you know, the types aren't there. So it's in, more interesting. But I guess to answer your question, I just read a couple books, and there's a lot of tutorials online. None of them specifically, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, beginning PHP tutorials, there's a lot online, and uh, they're actually really good, like, cool tutorial systems. And, uh, what, what about resources specifically related to theming, uh, just, you know, doing theming uh, with regards to, you know, making your own... Uh, files and stuff. This this video right here, it's like an hour video, and it's pretty good actually. From uh, it's from JupyterCon 2012 in Denver, and it's 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 very good. Um, he actually gets in details about um, better examples than you know what I did, and um, you know something that it's more applicable. So that I definitely recommend watching that one. If if this uh, video was actually you know informative, and you feel like I can get more out of it, the second one is is a really good video to watch. Yeah. We'll uh, we'll toss up a few uh, you know a few PHP tutorials and a few other tutorials on the blog when we post up these on Slack. Will example code be up to the book? Yeah. Question. Sure. Go ahead. Um, if I wanted to uh, pull, say, additional make query for additional uh, data that I wanted to display in a particular page, where would I put that? Would that be part of the page? So, if uh, if you're interested in you know going like what you ask is you know up, you have one node on the node page and you're like well I want another node on the node page as well basically another entity um, 
doing that load at template.php is not exactly like best practices white. You can do that. You can just like entity, you know, if you're referencing like a number or something in, in your node value and you have what you want, and then loading it in your template.php, you can do that. It's not recommended for you. Once you've gone to your theme level, you're pretty much done. You, you should be pretty much done at gathering all of your information. Um, all that stuff should happen in your uh, in your modules or uh, you know using views is pretty big uh, pretty big help when wanting to uh, concatenate a bunch of information into one because views has relationships and stuff. So like whatever you want to you know whatever you want to relate together and pass out. Uh, you could do that with any of those. Could uh, maybe show us an example of a, a preprocess, like a name of a preprocess function for a block? Or for a block? Yeah, or anything more detailed. Just, well, let's should have Zen. I should have been in one of the other projects. Maybe. Zen theme, uh, for sure everybody's heard of that. I, it pretty much I should have one somewhere. No. Um, there you go. Yeah, so inside the templates, or not, we're going to put the custom Wasn't that it? Oh. Yeah, so. Was it, that was in the Zens, yeah. Yes. There we go. So this guy has a. Uh, uh, yeah, this guy basically inside Zen, like literally shows all of them in your starter kit. The template.php has all these commented out. So using using a thing like ready like Zen really helps out because I'll even like so that way you never really have to remember what they're all called. They're just there, like there's a preprocess comment, there's a preprocess region. So there's a preprocess block, that's how you preprocess a block. Um, and in Drupal 7, you can uh, you can actually go one level deeper in pre-processing that specific yeah. block. Um, but you don't really need to. As long as you have the TPL file of that block, like block 123 front page, you can actually pre-process it. Because the whole point of it, you need to have the template to actually interact with it through your pre-process. So, you know, you have, you know, SAM content type, and you can just do the underscore SAM. And that's all you need, and then you just need to have that template. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? If not, then thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs>